But this morning, that is not the lesson. This morning, I would I would like to speak to you about another another thing. It is it is a, a weapon. It is a very very powerful powerful weapon, and and I believe myself that it is the most powerful weapon in the world. And that is the sword of the mouth. The sword of the mouth, church. One of the, the most powerful weapons in the world is, is sitting right inside of your mouth in between your teeth. The tongue. The tongue. And why is the tongue the most powerful weapon? It's because it is the tongue that is leading people to everlasting destruction. But also, it is the tongue that is leading people to everlasting life. In the tongue, there is power of life, and there is power of right death. There. So what comes out of your mouth is very, very important. We ought to think before we speak. <laughs> In James chapter 1 and verse 19, we all know it. It says, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man just some men, not just some people who think it's right. Every single person ought to be swift to hear yeah. and slow yeah. to right. speak and slow to wrath. And why is that? Well, you gotta think before you speak because you have a very, very powerful weapon inside your mouth. In Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 28, it says, The heart of the righteous studied to answer. So a righteous man thinks about what he's going to say before he says it. It says, But the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. And this wicked person just kind of flows out, just has no filter, just tells everybody whatever they feel like saying whatever they feel like saying that's what he, that's how he describes a wicked person but a righteous person thinks about the yeah. consequences oh, of yeah. what he's going to say or what she's going to say but but church we have to understand something it's it's not safe to speak we understand that it's not safe to speak. Why is that? Because there's going to be consequences for what you say. So in light of knowing that it's not safe to speak, therefore we should think about what we're going to say before we say it. Because it's a dangerous thing. The tongue <coughs> is a weapon. You must be careful when you use it. Okay, when practicing shooting a gun, when you practice shooting a gun, when you're practicing using a weapon, you don't just go and shoot it anywhere. Well, I'm just gonna go practice shooting a gun outside. Let me let me, let me, aim, one time let me aim at some of these cars that are passing by. No, no, you don't you don't aim, you don't practice your gun any using your gun anywhere. You take it to a shooting range and, exactly. and you you do it somewhere where it's safe. Yeah. Yeah. You don't just use it anywhere or anytime you feel like it. I'm right. here to tell you that your tongue is more powerful than a gun. And we should have we should have a control and thinking about how we're going to use it. Let me tell you, let me explain to you why. It's not just dangerous um, for the people that that you speak to. It's not just dangerous for the people that you use it on. It's dangerous for you as well. Because what you say to somebody else can end up, you can end up reaping the consequences of what you say. Right. So based on what you say to somebody else, you have something coming back at you. You reap what you sow. You say there are, there are consequences for every single word that you utter. You know that's Bible, church. That's Bible. There are consequences for every single word that comes out of your mouth. In Matthew chapter 12 and verse 36 it says, but I say unto you that every idle Our. word that men shall speak, every one of them, church, 
every one of them. They shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Church, think before you speak, because in the day of judgment, you're going to have to give an account for every single thing that you said. Everything. Think about that for a second. When you got mad when you cussed out that waiter. Mm -hmm. You got mad when you, 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 you said this to your spouse. You got mad and you said this. You got mad and you said this. You're going to have to give an account for everything that you say. Well, so you better think about it before you say it. It says, for by words thou shalt be justified. We're still reading in Matthew chapter 12. It says, for by words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words shalt thou be condemned. Now what is he talking about? Because confession is necessary for salvation. So if you didn't confess with your lips before men that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you didn't do all five steps to be saved. So, so in the power of the tongue is the power to give life and the power to receive destruction. So, you know, some people are, you know, think that that you know it's, it's all right to, to speak in certain ways because we're upset. Because when we get upset, you know, God understands, you know, he knows what he made, right? I, I get upset and, and I said this thing, you know, come on, we, we, we get mad sometimes. It's all right. You know what the Bible says? It says, be ye angry and sin not. So, so is, is anger an, an excuse to, to use this sword of the mouth in a way that is sinful? Absolutely not. So when I get mad, it's, it's, it's okay to cuss, right? No. no. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 says, Let no corrupt That's it. communication right it right proceed corrupt. out of your mouth. <laughs> it says, But that which is good to the use of edifying. You go around cussing people out, is that edifying? No. <laughs> but that it may minister grace to the hearers. When you, you tell somebody, you, is that is that ministering grace unto the hearers? And, and, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. And, and this is what's interesting about this. Because when it's saying when you when you use that corrupt communication, you grieve the Holy Spirit. I thought about it. I'm like, well, what is how does that how, do, how does that doesn't make sense to me? How does how does we, how do we grieve the Holy Spirit of God just by just by what we say? doing it. And you know what it is? You know why it is? The spirit is grieved by what you say because it is the spirit that gives you the power to say it. Because it's God's spirit that gives you the power to say these things. And that's Bible. In Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 1 it says the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. What does that mean? That means the man prepares in his heart what he wants to say, but when his tongue speaks, that's because God gave you the power to do so. So when you use your tongue in a way that is sinful, you grieve the Holy Spirit because it is the Spirit that's giving you the power to do so. And that's something that, that, that might help us to, to think about, like, you know, the, the spirit is giving me the power to do this, so maybe I should, maybe I should make a better decision. You grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Back in Ephesians chapter four, it says, "Whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption." It says, "Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted." Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Church, we have to learn how to talk to one another. We have to learn how to communicate with each other. And, and when we get offended, which is going to happen, when we get upset, which is going to happen, we can't let the devil convince us to speak in a way that's sinful. We can't let him convince us to speak wickedly and, and maliciously to another person. 
You know, it, it, it tends to, to have a domino effect. I'll tell you how. Someone makes you mad, and you snap on them, and, 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 and maybe they're scared of you, so they won't snap back at you, but they still have that feeling inside of them, that negative feeling that you gave them, and that negative feeling is gonna come out somewhere if it's not resolved. Maybe they, they're scared of you, so they end up snapping on someone else. That, that anger comes out somewhere else. Maybe not even that day, maybe somewhere down the line, it's gonna come out eventually. If somebody's been in a relationship, you know. You know, it's gonna come out eventually. You can hold it in as much as you want and try to conceal it, but it's gonna come out eventually. Take care of it. Take care of it. They end up snapping on somebody else because you snapped on them, and then eventually, then, then that person gets mad that, that they snapped on, and, and maybe maybe they got mad and they sped away in their car. You ever see that? Somebody get mad and they, they drive off, they driving fast because they mad, and then, then they get an accident. And then some people die, all because of this domino effect. It started with your evil communication. You get mad and cut somebody out. They, they're working, they're waiters, so they can't say nothing back to you, they'll lose their job. So they have to hold it in. They have a bad day. They take it out on somebody else. And then that person takes it out on somebody else. And then all of a sudden, somebody is somebody's dead. Domino effect. It happens. You know, the possibilities of what the tongue can do is endless. That's why, that's why it's mentioned as being such a, such a powerful weapon. And that's why in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 8 it says, but now he also put off all these. He said, get rid of all of these things. He said, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. He said, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Because it's going to cause so many, many problems. You know what? The thing about Thing about cussing is, is in the Bible there's certain words that people would deem as as cuss words. Today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So because they're in the Bible, because they're in the Bible, we say we can use them in in, in a way that's profane. So so the Bible speaks of a donkey as as a jackass, right? Yeah. So that is that is a noun that is that that is literally used to describe an animal. But if you call somebody a that's, that's not the same thing, church. I don't know. You know, you know. <laughs> no, you know. You know. <laughs> you know. In, in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, Jesus said that people that don't believe will receive damnation. Is that the same as, as using, you know, use that word in, in a profane way? That's the same thing, right? Right? We can, we can use it because Jesus said it. I can, I can cuss because he said that. But see, the, the thing about it is that is that it's, it's uh, in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 4, the way that it's worded, it says, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Yeah. Now, that word filthiness, that word filthy talking is, is the, uh, is according to the Greek lexicon, it's, uh, it entails behavior that flouts social and moral standards. Okay, that means it does without uh, social and moral standards. It's shamefulness or it's obscenity. And you know good and well that when you start cussing, it creates a scene. Yes, it does. It is obscene. <laughs> you know good and well. So that word filthiness means, means obscenity, okay? Or, or, or something that flouts social or moral standards. Now, we know good and well we ain't got no business cussing. But because, as it says it here, it's the same thing people say. Jesus, Jesus turned water into wine. He didn't turn it into alcoholic wine. Um, no, he did not. <laughs> so so we, we, we try to make it fit what we want. Yes. Yes, sir. And it's That's not right. so. He said, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather the giving of things. See, we have, to, we have to really understand that, that everything that comes out of our mouth is extremely important. I already yeah. told you that every single word that you say, you're going to have to give an account for it in judgment. Mm -hmm. So church, watch your mouth. 
You know, that sounds, it sounds rude sometimes to say, watch your mouth. But we really ought to watch our mouth. We really ought to think before we speak because it has the power to save you and to destroy you. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yes, it is. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Every day. That's how powerful your mouth is. That's how powerful your tongue is. That's how powerful the words that you say are. Think about, think about something that you said that somebody remembers from 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. You ever had somebody come up to you and say, I remember what you told me uh -huh. back then? Uh -huh. Words are powerful. <laughs> Whether it be good or bad. I had students come up to me, yeah, you know, I've been teaching for five years now. Students that I taught five years ago, yeah, I'm, I'm still doing music. I remember what you taught me this and that. I'm like, yeah, that's great. That's five years ago. That's only five. Yeah. But I know people that come up to people, yeah, I remember what you said 40 years ago. <laughs> I mean, a negative way. Yeah. Man, you got some good memories. Yes, they do out there. Because words cut deep. Church. They're powerful. Church. We ought to be careful with what we say. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 10. Think about this. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, right. and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You have to confess in order to be saved. It is part of the salvation process. It is part of the process of you having eternal life. That is how powerful your words are. Watch your mouth. I know it sounds rude, but we really ought to. And, and think before you speak. But understand that, that sometimes people are going to be offended. That's why I said yes. it's not safe to speak. Because right, yeah. think about this right now. I'm speaking to what, about 50, 50 people right now. Okay. Of something that I've said thus far has offended one person already. It's not safe to speak ever. It's not safe. Chances are you're going to offend somebody eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So try to be as meek and respectful yes, as yeah. you possibly can. Yeah. But stand yeah. on the truth. Yes. yes. Don't run around being afraid to speak. Okay. okay? So you can't go around withholding all the truth because uh, you're afraid to yeah. offend people. So you have to learn how to speak. Right, right. Kindness meekly sprinkled with salt. That's what the yeah. Bible says. Yeah. Right? You don't speak maliciously or rudely, but you need to express yourself in a way that the person listening can understand. Respectfully. Respectfully. Okay, if the person is outright wrong, okay, tell them as respectfully as you can. You know, it's, it's not safe to speak, nor will it ever will be. Okay, it's also not safe not to speak. It's also not safe not to speak. Yep. All these people that are that are walking around that are not members of the church and we haven't showed them what the gospel is, we're going to have to give an account. Exactly. Yes. It's also not safe not to speak. Christ said in Mark chapter 16 verse 15, go preach the gospel yes. to every creature. Go ye means go me. 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 That's right. It's not safe not to speak. You have to give an account for everything that you say and don't say, church. You know what I would rather? Stand up for the truth I believe in than live a lie to protect other people's feelings. You know, what's, what's more tolerable? Hurt feelings or burning bodies? Which one would you rather have? What would you rather have? Hurt feelings or burning beings? Hurt my feelings. Hurt my feelings. <laughs> now, which would you rather view? And you know what? What you what you say, church? What you say is a representation of what's inside of you. Yes. And that's why you can catch people in lies sometimes. Yes. <laughs> because it slip out. It slip out. What what's what the truth is, that's in what's inside of you? It's come out. When you speak, when you speak, it's gonna come out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is why you can determine a person's true intentions if you listen closely enough to what they say. Yeah. Especially if you've been listening to what they say for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> you can figure out what's really going on inside somebody. Yeah. Listen to them talk for a little bit. Yes. You know what? What comes out of your mouth can defile you. 
That's the Bible. Now, right, now, now, Jesus said, not, not, it's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you, <laughs> but it's what comes out of your mouth that defiles you, because what comes out is a representation of what's inside. It's a representation of what's already in you. Let's read that. If you would turn with me to Matthew chapter 15, and verse 11. That's it. It says, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man. Right. But that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended yes, they after were. they heard this saying? Yes. So this is why I say it's, it's all right. Sometimes you're going to offend people with the truth. Here is Jesus that lived a perfect life, right? He lived a perfect life. He did everything righteously. And here he is offending some people with the truth. Yes. After some time. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to. It says, but he answered and said, every plan. Okay, Jesus. This is his response to, to offending some people. Okay, Jesus. And this should be your response to offending some people with the truth. Yes. You're telling them the truth. Yes. Respectfully, church. Yes. When you're telling them the truth, respectfully. Okay, it says, every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. That's some tares. Remember the, the parable of the tares. He planted good seed, and then he went back and saw these tares growing. Like, I didn't like plant this. How do you imagine, you imagine planting, strawberry, planting strawberries and, and then go back and you see corn? Like, what? Uh, yeah, good what, example. What right? Good example. I didn't plant that. No, somebody came and planted the corn. <laughs> yeah. And Jesus said, the devil is the one that came and planted that. Yeah. And, he's, and, and the, the, the vineyard workers, they're like, should we, should we take this up right now? Should we cut it up? He said, no. no. Don't do that right now. Let them grow. Yeah. Let them grow. And then, and because we don't want to cut them up right now, because if we cut them up now, then we might harm the harvest of our own. Exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait till everybody grows up. Yes. And then when harvest time comes, we're going to cut the tears down. Something about to happen. And we're going to cast them into the fire. <laughs> That's right. And then all the good, strong, yeah. Yeah. will come into yeah. my barn. So, so it's all right sometimes to, to offend people with the truth. Because he said, he said, every plant which my heavenly father had not planted is going to be rooted up. All those people that are teaching false uh -huh. doctrine. That's what he's talking about. Yes, yeah, sure. Christ didn't plant that seed. Christ didn't die for that church. He died for his own. Yeah. That's right. He said they're going to be rooted up. It says, let them alone. They be blind yes. leaders of the blind. Yes. You know, yes. We talked about this in another scripture where he said, if my God, if the gospel be hid to, to anyone, it's them, hid to them, them that, that are blind. Yes. That are blind. Bible. And they've been blinded by the prince of this world. Satan. Satan has blinded their minds that they can't see. The gospel is simple. It's easy to understand. But if they can't see it, it's because they are blind. And not their eyes, but their mind That's is it. blind. It says, they be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, are ye also yet without understanding? Do ye not yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth going into the belly and is cast out into the drop, into the drop, cast out into the toilet. <laughs> but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies, these are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands defiles not a man. It's not to, it's, it's what is, is inside of you that is represented by what comes out of your lips. And you know, an easy mindset to have, an easy mindset to have with uh, controlling what we say is just let everything you say be for the glory of God. 
Yes. Is, is what I'm about to say yes, exactly. going to give glory to God? Is what I'm about to say going to help uplift the person that I'm talking to? Yes. Is what I'm about to say going to help them go to heaven? Now, now sometimes, sometimes people need to be broken down. Yeah. That's the way it is. Sometimes you have to tell them, hey, listen, uh, what you're doing is wrong. Yeah, tell the truth. What you're doing is wrong. And, and we, that mindset, once again, is it bringing glory to God? Yes. Yes, even if I'm hurting their feelings, because God wants everybody to repent. That's right. That's so is what I'm about to say going to bring glory to God? It's not if it's going to offend them. Is it going to bring glory to God? If it's going to bring glory to God, I don't care if it offends you. If it's going to bring glory to God. So that's the mindset that we should have. It says, let everything you say be for the glory of God. And remember that everything you say is a representation of what is inside of you. And that's why there's a little bit of truth to what people say. Even when they're joking, they say, oh, I'm just playing. Is there's a little bit of truth so what people say when they're joking sometimes, the truth comes out. You know what? We should, we should, and, and we get in trouble sometimes if we talk about things too much because if yeah. you don't stop talking about certain things, eventually yeah. you're going to be about it. Yeah. Yes. Keep on <laughs> talking about it, yeah. but eventually you're going to be about yeah. it. It's All right. Be it's real. Communication. Corrupt good manners. Every single time. That's why it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16, it says, But shun profane, profanity, profane, yeah, go, yeah, go again. shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Stop talking about that mess before you be about it. <laughs> yes. Be accountable for what comes out of your mouth, church. You know, if you know that what you said hurt somebody, if, if it wasn't, if it wasn't, so, even if, even if you were just trying to help them, say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. I'm trying to help you. Let them know. I'm trying to help you. I want to see you saved. Yes. I'm just trying to help you. That's what I'm saying it for. If you, if you hurt somebody, go and make it right before it gets worse. If you know that something you said hurt somebody, go and make it right. I mean, let's, let's, let's use this uh, this analogy for a second, briefly. Um, let's think about think about meat. When you take meat out of the freezer, right? You want to cook it, right? You take you take it out of the freezer. You let it thaw. Out. Okay. Um, I actually I actually really love uh, uh, beef. I eat a lot of beef and chicken. Um, I prefer 100% grass fed organic beef. It's amazing. It has a, a wonderful texture. But anyway, when you when you take it out of the freezer. To thaw it out, and you decide you decide not to make it after you took it out for a little bit. You know what? I'm not gonna make this. I'm gonna make something else. If you put okay. it back in the freezer real quick, then no harm done, right? It's like it was never. It's like you never took it out. So, so what I'm saying is, the quicker you put it back, the quicker you make it right, the better off you'll be. But the longer you leave the meat out, oh, something about to happen now. The more and more it will defrost. And then if it's fully defrosted, you can't put it back in the freezer without tainting the quality of the meat. Right, that's right. You, you, could, you could put it back in the yes, freezer you can. if you want to. Do it. If you want to, yes, you can. put it back in there, but it ain't gonna be no good. <laughs> you also have to, have to be careful because because some people, the things that they say, they take the meat out of the freezer and they throw it right in the pan. Some of the things that they say, it's like, it, it hurts it so much, it's like taking it out and just throw it in the pan and starting to burn it right there. So that's how some things hurt well, when they come out. So we also have to be careful. You have to be careful to put it right on a pan. You know, you, de you definitely can't put it back in the freezer and have it be the way it was before. This is how some people are with their words. Sometimes you can say some things that will cut so deep, it'll leave a scar. <laughs> and there's no way you can get it back to the way it was before. Others, if you take care of it quick enough, if you just put it back quick enough, you'll be just fine. It'll be like it never happened. Forget about it. 
won't even remember it anymore. This is an example given in scripture. Take care of it right now. Church. In Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 1, it says, My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of your mouth. If the words of your mouth have caused you trouble, or if they cause somebody else trouble, listen to what he said. Listen to what he said. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. It says, do this now, he said. My son, and deliver thyself. When thou art coming to the hand of thy friend, go, humble thyself, and make sure thy friend, make sure he's all right. Make sure you didn't hurt them. Say, if I said anything to offend you, I'm sorry. They said, humble yourself. It's hard, right? I ain't never been. No, I ain't apologizing. You better come to me. Yeah. Uh-huh. They better come and talk to me. I ain't going to them. Well, it says, humble yourself. Got you got to put your pride aside. Got to do it, church. Got to do it. And he said, well, wait, wait a few months, and when you feel like doing it. No. He said, do it now. Do it you know what he said? He said, give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. You better get it right today. Yes. Before you go to bed. Yes. No, this is the scripture. Let not the sun go down. On the that's, that's it. That's the one. Get it right today. Well, if you offended somebody, get it right. If something you said, you know it hurt them, get it right. Get it right. Say, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Humble yourself. I'm sorry. And consider these final scriptures. You know, sometimes you have, to, you have to let the Bible speak for itself. I'm just going to read these. Uh, it says in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 11, it says, The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence cover, covereth the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirreth up strife, but love covereth all sins. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. Yes. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Yes. Wise men lay up knowledge. But the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Yes. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. The labor of the righteous tended to life. The fruit of the wicked to sin. He, he is in the way of life that keepeth instruction. But he that refuseth reproof erreth. And that's another thing. Sometimes you have to be willing to listen to other people's words. Yes. You have to be willing to take some reproof. And it says he that hideth Hatred with lying lips. I gotta stop on this one. <laughs> he that hideth hatred with lying lips. That's that's the, the person that smile in your face. Okay, that's the one, huh? Talk about you bad behind your back. <laughs> the one that really hates you, but but when they with you, they love you. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you. He that you. Thank hatred you. with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. That's what the Bible says. Amen. It says, in the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. You know, church, that, you know what that means? That means some people talk too much. What? Amen. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. That means if you talk so much, Chances are, in the midst of all the talking you did, you done sinned somewhere. I told you that. Sometimes we just gotta be quiet. Yes. Amen. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. There is no lack of sin in the multitude of words. It says, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. Is what the Bible says. It says, the tongue of the just 